And uh, one of the, the, most people don't realize that we have 10 trillion cells in our body. And I know that sounds like a lot, but the important point to consider is that we have 60 trillion bacteria in our intestine. And really one of the keys to staying healthy is to make sure that you optimize the, the ratio of the good bacteria to the bad bacteria and yeast in your intestine. Uh, because if you don't, you are really increasing your risk for developing a, a many cr a chronic degenerative diseases. Uh, so let's talk about some of the things that you can do. One of the ones is that you want to stay away from sugars and processed foods and foods that break down quickly to sugars because what that will do, it will serve as fertilizer for the bad bacteria and the yeast. And once those get out of control, it uh, becomes very difficult to reverse that. So conversely, you want to replace those sugars and, and highly processed foods with more vegetable fibers and water-soluble fibers because those are fertilizer for the good bacteria. And that will help to optimize it. And the reason you want more good bacteria than bad is, is somewhat obvious. These good bacteria, actually, they're waste products. They produce waste products that are very important for, for our our own nutrition, it's sort of a symbiotic relationship. They produce things like vitamin K2, which has an, am an amazing influence on, on our health and bone density, and uh, a variety of uh, uh, other uh, elements that are really essential for optimizing our health. So that is key. So, if, um, so adjusting your food, making sure your diet is optimized. Uh, one of the other things you can do is to make sure you have plenty of intake of fermented foods. And fermented foods are common in many traditional cultures. Things like kimchi and sauerkraut and natto. However, most of us are not going to be consuming these regularly, so many people rely on things like yogurt. And I want to tell you that commercial yogurts are something that you typically want to avoid for a number of reasons. So the primary one, of course, is that they're, and this would also be true for kefir, but the primary one is that they are prim they're made from pasteurized milk. And if you, if you know from reading my site, you, you really do want to avoid pasteurized milk for a wide variety of reasons. But additionally, they will put things like high fructose corn syrups and other sweeteners to make them more palatable. So yes, there may be some good bacteria in there, and many of them, the, the, they had good bacteria, but they're all dead. So there are no, no live cultures. So it, it is really providing questionable value at best if you're consuming a commercial yogurt or kefir. If you want to make them yourself, that's a whole different story. So that, that, that uh, is, an, is an element that is uh, really not going to be a useful strategy for, for most of you. So when, what is the other practical option? Well, the simple one and the one that I recommend for myself, my family members, and all the patients I've seen that we, and we continue to see in our clinic is a high quality probiotic. And what do I mean by high quality? Well, let me give you some characteristics of a company that produces a high quality probiotic so that you'll be able to make a wise selection when you're at the health food store or you're online choosing this. The, one of the key things are to make sure, and this is not only true for probiotics, but it's true for all your supplements. Make sure that your supplements do not have magnesium stearate or titanium dioxide. Magnesium stearate is a flow agent. It's used to help the, the materials go into the capsule or the tablet, but it has no benefit for you. In fact, it's a huge disadvantage because it will, will actually promote the growth of a biofilm in your intestine, and this biofilm forms a layer between uh, the, the food and the, and the supplementation you're taking and your intestine, and it actually limits absorption. So it'll cause lots of problems for you. So no magnesium stearate, no titanium dioxide. That is one key thing. The second is that you want to make sure that you have a high-potency probiotic. Certainly, most uh, 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 companies that produce uh, products that are under 5 billion strains per, per, per dose are, are going to be relatively ineffective. So you want a high-potency one. That is really going to be important. 